In the grand story of our planet, there are materials that have defined entire epochs. Stone, bronze, iron. Each, in its turn, allowed humanity to reshape its world in remarkable ways. But now, in our modern age, we have called upon a new champion from the Earth's crust. It is a material that whispers of the future, a metal born of mythic strength and ethereal lightness. This is titanium. It is an element that carries the promise of conquering the skies, mending the human body, venturing into the unforgiving cold of space. It is, quite simply, a marvel of the natural world, harnessed by human ingenuity. This remarkable substance is all around us, yet it often goes unseen. It is hidden in the white pigments of paint on our walls, it is hidden in the protective lotions we smooth on our skin, but in its purest, most powerful form, it becomes something else entirely. It is a metal that is as strong as many steels, yet nearly half the weight. It laughs at the corrosive touch of salt water, which would devour lesser metals in mere months. Our story begins not in a modern laboratory, but in a quiet corner of England over two centuries ago. It was the year 1791 in the county of Cornwall, a land rich with mining history. Here, an amateur geologist and church pastor named William Gregor was walking near a stream in the parish of Manakin. He was a man of great curiosity, always observing the world around him with a keen eye. He noticed a strange black sand in the stream bed, a sand that was drawn to a magnet. This was not entirely unusual, but there was something different about this particular mineral. Intrigued, Gregor took a sample of this sand back to his small, home-built laboratory. He began a series of careful experiments, treating the sand with acids and observing the reactions. He discovered that the sand contained iron oxide, which explained its magnetic properties. But there was another substance mixed within it, a mysterious white metallic oxide he could not identify. It was unlike anything he had ever seen recorded in the scientific texts of his time. He had, without realizing the full significance of his find, stumbled upon a brand new element. He named the mineral Menachonite, after the parish where he had found it. A few years later, in 1795, a prominent German chemist named Martin Heinrich Klaproth was analyzing a different mineral, a reddish stone from Hungary, known as rutile. He too, isolated a strange, unknown metallic oxide. Believing he was the first to find it, he sought a name that would capture its incredible underlying strength. He turned to Greek mythology, to the powerful Titans, the children of Uranus and Gaia, who were legendary for their immense physical power. And so he named the new element Titanium. It was only later that he learned of Gregor's earlier work, and he gave the humble Cornish pastor full credit for the initial discovery. What makes titanium so special? What are the qualities that elevate it above so many other metals? Its most celebrated feature is its phenomenal strength-to-weight ratio. This is the secret to its success. An object made from titanium can possess the same strength as a similar object made from steel, but it will weigh around 45% less. This is a staggering difference. It is like being able to lift a great stone, only to find it feels as light as a piece of wood. This single property revolutionized industries where weight is a critical enemy, from building aircraft to designing elite sporting equipment. But its strength is only part of the story. Titanium also possesses a remarkable resistance to corrosion and rust. When exposed to air or water, its surface instantly forms a very thin, yet incredibly strong and stable layer of titanium dioxide. This invisible shield is passive and self-healing. If it is scratched, a new layer immediately reforms, protecting the metal beneath from any chemical attack. This makes it the perfect material for marine applications and chemical processing plants. Then, there is its relationship with the living world. Many metals, when placed inside the human body, trigger an immune response. But titanium is different. It is exceptionally biocompatible. Our bodies simply do not react to it. It can be placed in direct contact with bone and tissue, and the body will not only tolerate it, but will actively grow onto and bond with its surface. This unique property has made it a miracle material in the field of medicine, allowing for the creation of durable, long-lasting implants that become one with the patient. Furthermore, titanium is a resilient performer, even in the face of extreme temperatures. While some metals become brittle in the cold 
or weaken when heated, titanium alloys maintain their strength across a vast range of conditions. They can operate in the freezing void of space and endure the intense heat generated by a jet engine. This combination of being strong, light, corrosion-resistant, biocompatible, and temperature-resilient makes titanium a uniquely versatile performer. It is not just one of these characteristics, but the symphony of all of them together that makes it the true metal of the modern age. Titanium is, surprisingly, not a rare element. It is the ninth most abundant element in the Earth's crust. Far more common than copper. Far more common than lead. Far more common than tin. Found in most igneous rocks. And in the sediments derived from them. The primary commercial source? Ilmenite. The black sand first studied by William Greger. The other major mineral is rutile, a reddish-brown mineral. These are mined in vast quantities. Australia, South Africa, Canada. So, if the raw material is so plentiful, why is titanium known for being so expensive? The answer lies in the immense difficulty of refining it. The challenge is titanium's incredible appetite for oxygen. At high temperatures it reacts enthusiastically with oxygen. It also reacts with nitrogen, and with carbon. That makes traditional smelting methods used for iron completely useless. If you tried to smelt titanium ore in a blast furnace, you would end up with a brittle, useless material not a strong metal. For decades, this problem stumped chemists and metallurgists. The breakthrough came in the 1940s. The invention. The Kroll process, named after William J. Kroll. It's a multi-step process, energy-intensive, time-consuming, a batch process, and still the primary method today. First, the titanium ore is treated with chlorine gas and with carbon at very high temperature, around 1000 degrees Celsius. This converts titanium dioxide into a liquid called titanium tetrachloride. That volatile liquid must be painstakingly purified to remove other metallic chlorides. This purification is a delicate, complex chemical procedure. The final, most dramatic step takes place in a sealed stainless steel reactor. Purified titanium tetrachloride is slowly dripped onto molten magnesium, all inside an inert argon atmosphere. Magnesium is more reactive than titanium. It strips the chlorine atoms away. That leaves behind pure titanium in a porous form known as titanium sponge. The leftover magnesium chloride is drained away. The sponge is then crushed, pressed, and melted in a vacuum arc furnace to form solid ingots. The entire process is slow, expensive, requires enormous amounts of energy, which explains why the finished metal carries such a high price tag. To truly appreciate the prowess of titanium, one must see it in comparison to the workhorse of the industrial world, steel. For centuries, steel has been the backbone of construction, manufacturing, engineering. It's strong, relatively cheap, and produced in vast quantities. It has built our bridges, skyscrapers, cars. Yet it has a significant drawback, its weight. Steel is dense. Enter titanium. It changes the rules. It can match or exceed strength with a fraction of the mass. Imagine two identical solid bars. One is steel. The other is a titanium alloy. On the scale, titanium is about 56% the weight of steel. Almost half. In strength tests, titanium equals or outperforms steel. That high strength to weight ratio is the holy grail for engineers. It lets you build structures just as robust but much lighter. Consider an aircraft. Every kilogram needs fuel to lift. Replace steel parts with titanium in landing gear, engine parts, airframe. You can shave hundreds or thousands of kilograms. That becomes greater fuel efficiency, longer flight range, higher payload capacity. Same for a race car. Less weight means faster acceleration, better handling. For satellites, every gram saved on launch is hugely valuable. Of course, this performance costs more. We don't make everything from titanium. Steel stays economical where weight isn't critical, like building construction, heavy ground machinery. But in high-stakes tech, the premium for titanium is often worth it. It's a trade-off, cost for capability. In the relentless push for faster, higher, more efficient machines, titanium almost always wins the day. Nowhere is the impact of titanium more apparent than in the aerospace industry. 
This is the arena where its unique combination of strength, lightness, and heat resistance truly shines. The very first major application for titanium was in military aircraft during the Cold War. Engineers needed a material that could withstand the incredible stresses and friction-generated heat of supersonic flight. Aluminum, the traditional aircraft material, would weaken and deform at such high temperatures. Steel was strong enough but far too heavy. Titanium was the perfect solution, the only material for the job. The legendary SR-71 Blackbird, a high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft capable of flying at more than three times the speed of sound, is a prime example. Its airframe was constructed almost entirely from a special titanium alloy to cope with skin temperatures that could exceed 300 degrees Celsius. Without titanium, this aircraft simply could not have existed. Today, titanium and its alloys are essential components in all modern aircraft, both military and commercial. Critical structural parts of the airframe, landing gear, jet engines, fan blades, compressor discs. This same logic extends to the exploration of space. Launching a rocket is a battle against Earth's gravity, and every gram of mass matters. Fuel tanks, structural rings, engine components, the capsules that carry astronauts, the rovers that explore the surface of Mars. It is the metal that enables our journey to the stars. Beyond the sky and space, titanium's influence is felt in many other fields. Hip and knee replacements, dental implants, bone screws, bicycle frames, golf club heads, tennis rackets, exhaust systems, engine components, laptop casings, high-end watches. From life-saving implants to precision machines and objects of desire, titanium's reach extends into both the extraordinary and the everyday. One of the most persistent questions about titanium is why it remains so expensive when its raw materials are so abundant in the Earth's crust. The answer isn't scarcity, it's the complexity and cost of every step to turn ore into high-performance metal. From the black sands of a mineral mine to processing and extraction to a finished polished component, this journey is extremely demanding and energy-intensive unlike the simpler production of steel or aluminum. The primary culprit is the Kroll process. It's a batch process, not a continuous blast furnace style process. That means start-stop cycles for each load of titanium sponge. The Kroll process needs extremely high temperatures held for long periods and huge amounts of electricity. It also uses costly inputs, magnesium and inert argon gas. After that, the sponge must be melted in vacuum furnaces to form solid ingots. Expense continues in fabrication. Solid ingots are hard to work with. Titanium is difficult to machine. It tends to gall and stick to tools. It dissipates heat poorly, wearing tools fast. That forces specialized tools, controlled cutting speeds, and lots of coolant. Welding demands a completely inert atmosphere to avoid contamination. Aerospace demand raises the bar further. Every aircraft titanium part must be flawless. That means microscopic inspections and strict testing from the initial sponge to the final forged component. Kroll process, specialized machining, and stringent quality requirements. A high price tag for titanium. The story of titanium is a story of conquering hostile environments. Its unique properties make it the material of choice whenever engineers face a challenge at the very limits of what is possible. It is in these places, the crushing depths of the ocean, the searing heat of a jet engine, the frigid vacuum of space, that titanium proves its worth time and time again. Lesser materials would fail, but titanium endures. Consider the deep ocean. As you descend, the pressure increases relentlessly. For every 10 meters you go down, the pressure increases by one atmosphere. At the depths where deep sea submersibles operate, the pressure is immense capable of crushing a conventional submarine hull as if it were a tin can. To withstand this, the crew sphere of these vehicles must be incredibly strong, but it must also be light enough for the vehicle to have buoyancy. This is a perfect job for titanium. The pressure hulls of famous submersibles like Alvin are forged from thick titanium alloys, creating a safe haven for scientists exploring the mysterious world of the deep sea floor. At the other extreme, we have the world of high-performance engines. Inside a modern jet engine or a Formula One racing engine, components are subjected to incredible temperatures, intense rotational forces, and a highly corrosive environment. 
Making them from titanium instead of steel reduces their mass, allowing the engine to rev higher and produce more power. In a jet engine, titanium blades spin at supersonic speeds in a torrent of hot gas, a task that no other readily available metal could perform so reliably. Even in the realm of architecture, titanium is used to make a statement of permanence and beauty. Its incredible resistance to corrosion and pollution means that a building clad in titanium panels will retain its luster for centuries, untarnished by acid rain or salty air. It is a monument not only to art, but to the enduring and beautiful nature of the metal itself. For over half a century, titanium has confidently worn the crown as the ultimate high-performance material. It has taken us to the sound barrier and beyond, helped us explore the deepest parts of our planet, and mended our bodies in ways that once seemed like science fiction. Its dominion over the world of aerospace, medicine, and high-end engineering has been all but absolute. The name Titan has been well-earned. But in the relentless march of science and technology, no throne is ever truly secure. The future is always unwritten, and new challengers are beginning to emerge from the laboratory. The question we must now ask is a profound one. Will titanium continue its reign, or will it be dethroned by the next generation of materials? On the horizon we can see the rise of carbon fiber composites, materials that are even lighter than titanium, and can be molded into complex shapes. We see the development of advanced ceramics that can withstand even higher temperatures, and new superalloys that push the boundaries of strength. Material science is a field that never stands still. The search for something stronger, lighter, and more capable is a constant driving force of innovation. Perhaps the future does not belong to a single champion. It may be an era of collaboration, where titanium is used in concert with these new materials to create hybrid structures that leverage the best qualities of each. We might see aircraft with carbon fiber wings and titanium landing gear, or engines that combine ceramic components with titanium alloys for optimal performance. The role of titanium may evolve from being the sole hero to being an indispensable part of a new, more complex team of advanced materials, each playing its part to perfection. Ultimately, the legacy of titanium is secure. It was the material that broke the old barriers and showed us what was possible when we demanded more from our metals. It taught us that strength did not have to come with a penalty of weight. Whether it continues to rule alone or shares its kingdom with the innovations of tomorrow, it will forever be remembered as the element that gave our greatest ambitions the strength to take flight. The story of materials is a ceaseless epic, and while the chapter on titanium has been glorious, we must look to the horizon and wonder, what comes next? Will titanium truly become the metal of the future, or will new materials eventually replace it?